think one of my battles has always been, um, you know, I, 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 when I was younger, I used to try and I used to put on loads of different faces and try and be loads of different people to different people to just to try and fucking please, you know, spend time pleasing knobheads I didn't like to get, you know, things that I thought I needed. From GoFounder, it's Business Knobs. Why is it called Business Knobs, you might ask? Well, there might well be a few knobs on the podcast, me being one of them, but what it stands for is Business No Bullshit. This podcast series is all about the trials, tribulations, and occasional successes of starting and growing a business without the Hollywood filter. I'm Eddie Whittingham, and on the show today, Dan Kelsall and I talk frankly about how starting and running our own businesses had an effect on our mental and physical health. So obviously, Dan, we've been in the game a while, running our own businesses, different businesses, since when we first met even. So how's it, how has running a business sort of taken a toll on on you, would you say, initially? Um... (sighs) It fucks you up, doesn't it, mate? I think in in, in general, well, it's not the glamorous uh, side of it, but <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think the minute the minute you start a business, I don't, I don't think you're ready for what what um, what's in store mentally. I think there's 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 I don't think you can ever contemplate how hard it's going to be, and I yes. think that's all. I think that's also probably why it's very very difficult for other people outside of that that have never done it before to contemplate why you can't come on that night out. Or you can't jump on for a, a quick game of cod, or why you, you know, why your missus can't understand why you can't just nip to the pub for a drink or go for that meal, or it's really, really difficult for people to understand that. And I think, I think even when you when you first before you first start that first business, even you can't contemplate it. No, you, you definitely. I think to start that first business, you need a level of naivety to jump 100%, into it. Hundred percent, mate. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, because it, it, there's a lot of pressure. I think there's a lot of pressure that you're not, you, you you are not prepared for. You're really not prepared for it. And I think actually o- over time, I don't think, especially like I think as as, as blokes and as, especially as Brits, where we've got that kind of stiff upper, upper lip, I don't think like you're prepared for that pressure. And I think actually over time, the long-term effects on your own mental health and your head is, is it can be quite fucking destructive, really. Do you think it time. gets, do you think it gets easier or harder as it goes on? I think it depends who you are, mate. I think, I think it's... It, I think it's a roller coaster, mate. It's up and down, isn't it? You have you have you have good years, bad years, good months, you know, bad months, good weeks, bad yeah. weeks. It's, I don't think there's any telling on, on how it's going to go. And even, but even when I've been in stages where even when things are going well, uh, that's when I've been the, the most down. Yeah, you, you, well, probably you're waiting for it to come crumbling down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. you I think it's feel been, like you're, you're balancing. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Collapse, so it's interesting. So we talk about like. Mental health it is coming to the forefront more and more, thankfully. Yeah. But it, I think it can break down into more than just the wider piece of mental health because mm. particularly when you're starting a business, I think you're left so much more exposed than you are as an employee. Yeah. So I think, for example, you know, that I think that self-doubt when you first start off is is massive, or it was for me. I, I'd gone from... You know, career in the police where I had my own identity, kind of knew what knew what I was doing. Um, then qualified as a lawyer, obviously in a big corporate law firm, mm. safe as houses really as jobs go. And then obviously that first day when you're on your own and you are the CEO of a one man band, yeah. the pressure's there, isn't it? And then you've got you've got to be confident you can deliver on that, and mm. you've also got to. Even if you are not an expert businessman, which you ain't going to be when you start, and you, well, you're never going to be, quite frankly, you've got to present that you are. Mm. Yeah, yeah, there's there's always like yeah, because you if you look like you're uh, if you look like you're crumbling and look vulnerable, or, or or maybe this is just perception, maybe this is just perception. But I think if you look look like you're crumbling or look vulnerable or look like you don't have a fucking clue what you're doing, chances are your clients are going to start looking at you. <laughs> He don't, he don't have a fucking clue what he's doing. Well, I liken it to when you're trying to chat up a bird or a lad in a yeah, yeah. club. If you are desperate, you ain't getting anywhere. Yeah. yeah but the minute you're taken, yeah. you know, it's, you've got a bit of confidence That's and it makes thing, a big yeah. difference. It is It is the confidence thing. And I think you're right. But it's that pressure again of, I don't think you realise that, because that, I, I mean, for me going out on my own, it's, uh, there's no security there whatsoever. Like, I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's I have, I've got no crutch. No, you know, I've I've not got a partner with them in it. I've not, you know, I don't really get on with my family that well. 
uh, every single penny that's coming in, if that goes tits up now, it's on you. I've got fuck all. Yeah, it's on I've, you. I've, yeah. I've literally got, I've got nothing. I've got nothing. You know, I've got decent mates and stuff. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, of I'll course. Be able to scrape but, but, but the pressure, the pressure's on, isn't pressure. it? But yeah, not yeah. only that, now that now that I've got uh, staff and things, it's my responsibility as well for them. If this business crumbles, we're all in trouble. Like, yeah. and, and I don't think you realise that, that, that you know before you start. I don't think people who have ever not, never had a business understand kind of that that those responsibilities that you've got. True. Yeah, and, and I, I probably didn't until I got the first employee, mm. and then all of a sudden it. it, it I don't know, it sounds daft, but it's like taking in a member of the family almost. Like, you are responsible, or you, you certainly feel responsible yeah. for it. I know, you know, everyone, if it if it did go wrong, hopefully they'd find another job. But in yeah. the immediate future, you know, they're pinning the exactly. hopes on getting a mortgage in a house on, on the job yeah. that you have created. Exactly. Really. And, then, yeah, and then there's other things, aren't there, that play in your head. I mean, if you have, have to get rid of people, I've had to get rid of people, you know, because they were either shit at the job or they were... Yeah, it's horrible. They, 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 were, they were a bad fit for the culture, but it's, fuck it, it's, it's not nice. Even, no, if, it's like, not. even if they didn't like the kid, it's still a, it's still a case of... Fuck me! I've just I've just fucked with their livelihood. I think it, I, I think it's one of the harder things mm. to do in business. Full stop. Like I say, even if mm. even if they're not a great fit and you know it's not right, yeah. to actually sort of take that jump and do it is is still not a nice thing to do. No, exactly. And it's that sort of pressure as well because everything that you do and every decision you make. I mean, I, I can sometimes be a bit of an overthinker, but things like that do play on my mind, especially if it affects someone else. Yeah, yeah. Is it, yeah it's it, not an it, easy split second decision. Oh. No, and that, yeah. all these things, I think, I, mean, I think that's what, what you know, I was, I was kind of getting at before. All these things, I, I honestly think the effect on a, on, a, on the mental health of an entrepreneur is generally a build up over time. A lot of the time as well. There's, there's, I mean, that's why you know most uh, you know entrepreneurs when they sell the business, they're all they're all fat and bald. And, uh, Exhibit A. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Dan. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Wow. Sorry, mate. Uh, Sorry, yeah. I have yeah. been losing my hair recently, and yeah. I have been putting on the pounds. Right, well. You know what, mate? Leave sold the business. Though, true. Success, I'm still going through it. So, <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? um, but yeah, I just, I just think it's a, it, it could be a build up. Um, and I, I think, I think there, there is a, there is that, that, that pressure is like nothing else you'll ever, you'll ever experience. I think I agree with the building of it. I think there are obviously clear pinch points, at, you know, at times in the business <laughs> where money's tight or whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it's that constant pressure. There's no let up. So you can be on holiday. You know, I, mm-hmm. you know, I was on my honeymoon doing work, mm-hmm. um, stuff like that. And it's, there's no let up to that. And I don't think unless you've got people around you who've been in those circumstances, they don't probably get that. No. You, you know, you do need to get that proposal out or you're going to lose that business mm-hmm. and, and that business will pay someone's wage for the next month. And it's the little thing, the little nuances and it, it it's constant. And yeah. I, it's maybe not talked about enough from the business side because I think we see too much of the, you know, entrepreneurs having this great lifestyle or um, the stupid rented Lamborghinis and the mansions and all this rubbish. Well, a lot of it's that front though, isn't it? Like like we talked about before because the reality is, and and I kind of get why people do that as well because you don't want people to perceive you as potentially, you know, shit at what you do like you don't want that that, that perception is you know and, and all that thing of you know fake it till you make it has been plugged for years because people look at that they see a successful person and the truth is it, it, that, that fake it till you make it shit did used to work until people started calling out because people look at you think you're successful if you're successful now you're going to help my business be successful so yeah. you know it's, it's going to be a good partnership whereas you know I, I think there's kind of a, there's a new wave of people coming through now though where there's there's, there's a there's because we've been the, the whole business world has been full of bullshit for so long yeah people are crying I mean it's the only reason I, I think I've got a job now. It's only the reason the thing things work is because yeah, people are realizing yeah he's a bit of a dickhead and he swears all the time, but he's honest and he's real and he's direct and he tells you how it is. Because, yeah, it's straight. Because I, I actually think that people are learning now that actually none of us fucking know what we're doing. Nobody has a fucking clue what they're doing. A lot of it's luck, right? If you think that all this fucking bullshit about yeah I'll make my own luck, you Rubbish. don't. You yeah. don't, right? You don't. There are loads of people. You know, people say you know you, you make your own luck by working hard and whatever else. There are tons of people that work hard and never make it anywhere. Right. I like I liken that too. I think you can you can work really hard, and you can give yourself give yourself the opportunity to get in the potential to have that slice of luck. But you still need that slice of luck. Yeah. So you can yeah. you can go and almost get yourself ready to be able to jump out of a window, but you still mm-hmm. need the windows to be open. Yeah, exactly. And you think about any any other any other profession, right? Like you think of like you think of like some of the greatest boxers on earth, like Floyd Mayweather, arguably, you know, in some ways the the, the greatest boxer of our time, right? Um, there, there will be someone on earth in all the billions of people who is better than him. Yeah. But you'll never, you'll never ever hear of them. They work just as hard as him, might even work harder, right? But 
more probably, talented. Probably in a different, <laughs> <laughs> completely different uh, never career. There. Never got there. Never got right, right time, right place. Yeah. Never had that slice of luck and never, got, never made it, right? That's the truth of life. Like, if you sat there thinking that, that you, I'm definitely going to make it, you're probably not. That's the reality of it. Um, and I think it's it's kind of that 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 reality now of everyone realizing that that's the case, and everyone realizing you know what we're, none of us really know what we're doing. It's all bullshit. We can only do the best we can do. If we get the luck and we make it, then we're then fucking hell great. Um, but I think this 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 can I think that's actually a really good thing for uh, uh, mental health. I think I think that that kind of realism and us all understanding actually how we all feel and be honest yeah. about it. Just stop believing the fake the, the yeah, fake yeah. get rich stuff, the overnight success, it doesn't yeah. happen like that. It, it takes time. Absolutely. And I think the it will make people find the journey, particularly the mental health journey, much easier if they know that from the start. Mm. Um, I was guilty of thinking it, you know, it would happen a year or two years. It takes yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. I was lucky it happened in sort of just over three years. That's quick. Yeah. And I only know that now, yeah. but at the time it didn't feel quick. It just oh. takes time. And I think... That's the biggest misconception, particularly in the sort of startup industry and this this drive for investment and money and blah, blah, blah. It's all rushed. Mm-hmm. And actually, creating good businesses takes time. Of course it does, yeah. And, 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 it, and it takes a lot of fucking up as well. Yes. Like I've been doing, you know, I've been, been building shit businesses for since I was, what, fucking 22 or something, right? And it's, I'm now, you know, I'm 33 in two weeks. And it's the first year I've ever, if about the first few months, I've ever been able to pay myself a decent wage. Yeah. And that, 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 that's how long it's taken. And that's a reality that people don't appreciate. And it's, it's You know what I did, mate? I've, I've, I've bought myself in uh, and I'm now a member, well, well, I will be a member of the uh, Midland Hotel Spa and Gym. Bloody hell. So I'm going to be sat there in the, the jacuzzi now. So I've changed, mate. Just in the jacuzzi. Changed, nothing yeah. else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Gym, mate. So I think one of the things that I definitely... I don't know if I, st- I struggled is a strong word, but I had mm. to come to grips with was that whole imposter syndrome. Mm. It's not a particular term I love. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier about sort of faking it till you make it. Mm. Now, I think there's two elements of that. Mm. You were talking about faking it till you make it in terms of almost pretending you're a success, mm. which is one thing, which I don't necessarily agree with. But what I do think y- you almost have to do when you first start out, unless you are an expert in your field mm. is... You are going to have to fake some of that, and, and you are going to have to get over that that imposter syndrome, or at least yeah. I mean, whether whether that's training yourself up yeah. to get over it and, and learning on the job properly, yeah, rather than necessarily faking it. I think faking it's probably a yeah. bit of a strong yeah. word. I mean, either that, or just accept it. Yeah, well, yeah, and tell people that you're not. Like, I mean, I go around going, "There's no such thing as a as a as a, a digital marketing expert anymore. Like, the world moves too fast. Like, like actually, all all we can do is adapt because something might work today." I might, you might be the best the best in the world at it. And then as soon as, you know, the particular platform that you're on changes its algorithm or changes its feed in some way. Yeah, or even it, just trends. It, it fucks your shit up, yeah, right? Yeah. So that you're no longer an expert, right? So you can't so you can't be an expert. So I got literally go around selling into clients going, I'm not an expert. No one's an expert. This is how we work, but I'll adapt quick enough and I'll make sure that I get results for your business. And that's the but I think that that, that kind of mentality is just like rather than going because people panic and go, you know, I'm I'm not capable of doing this. I've got this imposter syndrome, I'm out my depth. Why not just we are, but then they worry about that and how am I going to cover yeah, that up? Yeah, correct. The imposter syndrome co- comes from going, how am I going to cover that up and how am I going to keep lying to them and keep the, keep the game up? Well, why have the game in the first place? Yeah. Why not just say to your clients, listen, I'm fucking, this is new to me, so I'm flying by the seat of my pants, but I'm going to do the best I can for you and I'm going to work fucking harder than my competitors. Well, I do think you touched on it earlier. I think we're in an age now where businesses are more accepting of an honest answer. Mm. So, you know, I, yeah. I wouldn't genuinely think twice about working with someone who's brand new to their particular specialism. Mm-hmm. If anything, I can see real benefit in that because mm-hmm. they're going to be brand new, they're going to want to impress, they're going to work twice as hard as the one who's been established 10 years. 100%. But I think that's a different attitude to what it was 10, 20 years ago. Well, I don't even think you could, could have got away with... I, I, I'm not sure that the, the, the attitude that I've got and the attitude the, the agency has, I'm not sure that we'd have existed five years ago. Mm, that's interesting. I really don't think it, there's been a build-up. I remember when I first started, link, you know, all, 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 my, all my shit on LinkedIn and, and speaking like I speak, and that was probably maybe, you know, five years ago. And they, it didn't get the reception I got now. It was a lot more. I got a lot more shit for that back then. Nowadays, yeah, whereas now nowadays it's either either the, the, the people that can't stand me have got fed up with saying stuff. And blocked you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. oh there's, a, there's, there's a new wave of people realising that actually the world's changing. Yeah, it's more acceptable to be yeah, like that. Exactly. Do you, do you think you had any imposter syndrome? So you've you mentioned earlier you've had mm. a few different businesses as you've yeah, tried yeah. to get on and get through. Have you mm. have you struggled with that, or is that 
is it not been an issue really? Um, I think I think because because I think one of my battles has always been, um, you know, I I, I I when I was younger, I used to try and I used to put on loads of different faces and try and be loads of different people to different people to just to try and fucking please, you know, spend time pleasing knobheads I didn't like to get, you know, things that I thought I needed. And 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 uh, and actually, in, in reality, the last few years and 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 it's been really beneficial. It's been spent trying to make myself I mean we all wear different masks I don't think yeah. you ever get away from that when no one's actually truly authentically themselves all the time but but trying to work towards being unapologetically myself has been my key goal and I think that the more I do that the the, the more confident mentally I become in, in 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 myself and in what I can deliver for people and what, what my ability. but I think that that's that's been the but in terms of the the whole imposter syndrome I think everybody goes through that I think you know the 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 whole the whole mental health thing with with because I'm quite a on the outside on the outside I'm probably not that much of an emotional person inside I'm up and down like a yo yo anybody who knows me really closely will know that fuck it I'm, I, they, they can't cope with it it's like mood swing central <laughs> one week I think everything's just the, the best thing ever. yeah you know uh, my business partner Dean like sometimes the amount of shit I give him in terms of uh, you know in, in, in terms of having li- I have little tantrums I'm nearly 33 I have tantrums in the office I can't think of a good idea a client you know it's it's um but that's because you want to be good at what you do as well isn't it yeah but it's all and it, you know but it's, but it's true for other people it takes them on a mental a mental journey as well because it probably affects their heads because they yeah. don't know which they, they, you know uh, that's funny you mentioned that so when <laughs> i first started well not even just when i first had the whole journey really mm. i'd have those conversations with my missus where you know she'd be like how's work and it'd be monday and i'd be like yeah it's mint <laughs> next day Fucking shit. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Get a job. Correct. It, really. And it literally, yeah. people talk about a bit of a cliche, but it's that roller coaster. And, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I wasn't just subjecting myself to that. Yeah. I was subjecting her to that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, whoever's close to you, friends, family, whatever it might be who's involved yeah. or co founders, they're on the journey with you. It's the impact of that as well. And that's the thing is, uh, that's, 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 that's the problem with it. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's affected my relationships. I've, a lot, a lot, you know, my my, my uh, last relationship, I'd say, probably broke down because of because of that. I mean, I'd quit, I'd quit my businesses every week. I still do. <laughs> Honestly, still, yeah, I still do. I still do. Um, and it's, uh, but but like you said, it's not just the impact on yourself. It's the, the there's a everyone's mental health around you is impacted yeah. in some way because they ha- they are having to cope with that journey because that it's like like you say, it's like nothing else. There's a lot of pressure, but I think sometimes it's easy to get wrapped up in yourself and forget the pressure you're putting on other people. Yeah, very true. Um, so if we think about the actual, I guess, maybe physical and, and mental effects, just being on the journey's add on you, mm. can you kind of put your finger on anything where you, you can you can see that is a direct result of having been on this business journey almost? Can you Do you think that's... What is in as in like what mental pressures is in the way? Yeah, as in like how can you kind of put your finger on a, a time, a point in time, or something that's happened to you where you can put that down to the pressure of running a business? I think I, I've I've got examples of that. Yeah, I mean there was there was I mean, there was one recently, mate, and it was um, uh, you know it's a typical story of my life where everything seems to go tits up, but uh, it's just just a ridiculous thing to happen but I'd been I'd, I, I got got a bit ill and stuff and I really I, I didn't used to get ill and I've had a quite a, quite an early year this year I think just cause, I reckon a lot of that's been the mental pressure of 2020 because it's been a fucking shite year for everyone right yeah but um but I got ill um at first it was an eye infection and then my eye swelled up um and then I got like a bit of the flu and then I started getting uh, a cough and then I started getting I'm thinking oh fucking hell Fucking, it's definitely Corona, isn't it? Yeah, you're going uh, down. So, and to the point where I woke up um, one afternoon, I couldn't breathe. Um, so I thought, I mean, I, I, I'm one of those. I mean, I've been brought up with a with a with a family of men who just, you know, suck it up, mate. Um, who don't go to the doctors and don't take paracetamol and don't take tablets and just cope with it, right? So, but this this so this is how bad it was. I thought, oh, I've not got to ring the doctor here. So I ran the docs, and the doc was like, uh, "Yeah, you, I can hear your breathing's very laboured over the phone." Probably going to send around a paramedic. Gets his paramedic round on all of those little ones on the bikes. This bloke comes round, uh, and he wasn't very reassuring because I mean, I was, I was, <laughs> I was, I was struggling to breathe, like really struggling to breathe, and couldn't get up off the, off the, off the floor. And he just went, "Oh yeah, it looks like COVID city, this mate." Oh, fucking COVID, COVID on, city. Mate. COVID wow. City. Welcome to COVID yeah. city. Yeah. Cheers, pal. Uh, and he said, "Yeah, all your vitals are telling me that it's that. We're going to have to get an ambulance for you." And then just after he'd said that, I farted. 
I mean, it's what a really dirty fart. I was, I was just, my body was just, just into me just doing whatever it wanted, right? Because I just, I don't know, I, I didn't know what was this happening. This is taking a turn. I did not couldn't, expect this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I couldn't breathe. Oh, it takes him more of a turn, mate. So I couldn't breathe. So the ambulance comes and he takes me outside anyway and he says, oh, we've got to cool you down because your temperature's up. So he takes me outside and it's a particularly cold day. Um, I've got a t-shirt on, so I'm, you know, shivering my tits off. And I get in this ambulance and I still can't breathe and it's thingy. So he takes me down to the, to the, you know, where they set up the COVID ward in, in uh, Manchester Royal, um, and then I'm just in this on this fucking COVID wall all day, fucking around like doing different tests and things. And then until the end of the day, where he just turned around and said, "Didn't tell me what I got. Just went, you haven't got COVID, so uh, you know, go home. Uh, you know, go back to your doctors and try and figure it out." Uh, and it was only when I got home that I was obviously in bits. I'd been shivering in the hospital all day, but I had cold sweats. I stunk, um, uh, and I thought oh, I've, just got, I've got to get in the shower. And I took my took my kex off. Uh, and it was it was just it had been like a a, a brown explosion in that day. So obviously that fart was a shark. Right. So I'd, I'd not it, 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 you know a bad day was made worse by the fact that I'd actually been sat in my own shit all day. Mm. Um, so, and and that but the, you know that that was a, I, I think that that whole that whole thing was you know when I spoke to the doctors later it was probably more like a panic attack. Really, which I've never had. I've never had before, and that's probably a direct result of uh, the pressure of this year. And I think that is, and and if I, when I look back at it, I, I hadn't had a like, you know I hadn't had a holiday for for for, for you know eighteen months. I hadn't, I, hadn't, I hadn't had a day off. Wow. You know, every single day working, working, working. Yeah, so it's it that building time. again, isn't it? Build up, build up, build up, and you you, you just cannot physically do it. Uh, but then the other thing on the back of that, and the other thing that winds me up is when people talk about work life balance. If you're an entrepreneur, right? I'm sorry. You don't when you one. start that first business, right? When you start that first business, especially in that first year. If there is anybody out there who's managed to do it and add that work-life balance, I think you're talking shit. I really do. It's yeah. all well. It's all nice and well. All these wellness coaches say work-life balance. You have to look after yourself. The, the, I don't think. It's, I don't. Not think to get somewhere. Not. No. Not if, no. if you if you need to get to a you know point in the business where <coughs> it's making enough money for you to take out money from the business or hire the next person or whatever. And it and it's that. It's also that aspiration, isn't it? Because it's yeah. like. I, yes, I could. I could have a work-life balance if I want to just maintain the business at this level now. But ninety yeah. percent of business owners don't want to do that. They want to keep growing it. Yeah. So you never stop. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. And that. But the thing is, like, I think it's a certain type of person as well. Like, like I mean, they relate. They relate. Um, you know, I fucking hate the word. I keep saying entrepreneur, but it's a shit word. They relate like people who start businesses to addicts and gamblers, right? Because mm. that's essentially what we are. We we we. Like I am addicted to what I'm doing. I can't let it slide. If I wake up in the morning and there's something to do, or if I'm I, at night, if I can't sleep, if there are things to do, or I've got pressure, or there's something going on tomorrow, or I need that done, or that's not right, or I don't like that piece of content, or that piece of writing's not right. I can't. I'm I'm, I'm addicted to doing it. It's interesting you say that. So that that is hundred percent a common trait. So you know, I, I'm in a position where obviously the business's been acquired. Mm. What am I doing now? I'm sat there doing a podcast. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's, it's stuff like that. I can't. I, I can't. Yeah not do stuff yeah. so it's about wanting to I don't know keep learning is part of it but yeah, yeah. do we, do we enjoy the pressure are we is that part of it or uh, is that yeah. or is that a byproduct of it I don't you know, know. What? I think I think we do because whenever I sit still mate is when I become most depressed mm. actually when the pressure's on even though I don't realize and I haven't realized the effects it's having on my body long term when the pressure's on I feel most at home does that depend what type of pressure though because you just said obviously your shitty pants Oh yeah, and but I think that's my body breaking down of me. But that's my point. Yeah, that's the, but I think I mentally, make like I make light of it. But my point yeah, being yeah. there, that wasn't you weren't just under the pressure of doing work there. Yeah, yeah. There must have been other factors that were really oh, causing yeah. that. Well, I mean, there was a whole thing of like, I mean, I don't, I don't do well on my own anyway. But I sat in a flat facing the same four walls. And yeah. I, I was very, I was very well behaved in 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 the in lockdown. I was, I stayed indoors. You know, I I, I followed the rules, and and being on your own for that long is fucking not healthy. Right. And I think that that's Agreed. a massive contributing factor as well. Um, and when you haven't got people to bounce ideas off, and I'm just fucking walking around my flat trying to think of ideas for a, I don't know, fucking uh, cybersecurity firm, for instance, right? And I'm thinking, what the fuck? There's no one to buy. It's, it's really hard to be creative when you're staring at the same four walls. You yeah. can't get out of the house. Yeah, no inspiration. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's no wonder I fucking uh, that happened to me. I shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, similar similar story without the shit. So. Yeah. I didn't think it at the time, but now in hindsight, can definitely link it to that that pressure, that you know, that mm. mel- mental well-being or lack of it. So it was going back. It was last year. Um, 
wife was about eight, nearly nine months pregnant. And at the time, business business going well, but very busy. So usual pressures there. Yep. Obviously, staff, everyone's quite happy, or it seems. And then uh, one of my first employees who was sort of, you know, relatively senior to me, um, they were the one that I had plans to just basically say, right, when the baby comes, I can have for the first time in about four years, a couple of weeks where I don't have to do too much work mm-hmm. and I can spend some time focusing on child, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, so around that same time, that employee hands the notice in. Right. So it was a really stressful time for me because it was both, you know, home stress because first baby on the way, don't know what to expect. Um, trying to look after the missus and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Business needs to keep running and rolling. Mm-hmm. And then now sort of, I guess, my crutch in a way in terms of someone who I really trusted to be able to take care of the business had handed the notice in and it came out of the blue. So that that at the time, obviously looking back, yeah, that's obviously stressful. Mm-hmm. No question about it. At the time, I didn't really appreciate that. But anyway, long story short, I was went to bed one night, didn't feel particularly stressed or anything, woke up in the middle of the night, felt a bit sick. Um, got up quick because I thought I was going to chunder, went through to the bathroom, had a quick waz, and as I was pissing, stumbled yeah. and made a bang. Mrs. runs through, you're all right. And I just remember sort of half saying to her, I don't feel very well, which is, again, yeah. similar to you. I'm normally pretty well. I don't yeah, really yeah. have many odd turns. Definitely not like that. Yeah. So she sits me on the bog, goes to get me a glass of water. Next thing, bang, I'm Sparco heads twisted behind the toilet in between the toilet and the bath she runs in thinks i'm dead because the way i'm laid on the floor she's screaming at me eddie 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 and then the next thing i know is i jump up to my feet she's screaming in my face like eddie like her eyes are going crazy she's obviously you know really scared and then i dispute what apparently i said apparently i jumped up off the floor from being completely stone cold out yeah. jumped up off the floor and just shouted in her face wolves <laughs> wolves now i maintain i was trying to shout why are you yelling at me yeah. um but I, I was like a bit dazed from obviously going unconscious right. uh, i thought maybe someone had broken into the house blah 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 ambulance came took me to the hospital weren't sure what it was um long story short it was low blood pressure followed by having a piss which lowers your blood pressure and so on and so on but if you look at it if you look at the circumstances around when that happened probably stress related because you know otherwise I'm a fit and healthy chap apart from being bald and getting fat like you mentioned earlier (laughs) sorry mate Um, but yeah it's funny how it represents sometimes and you know I I think looking back if I'm honest that was probably stress related Mm -hmm. yeah 100% I think we all I think we block a lot of stuff out as well actually no, I do. If I've got a problem, then I'll just I'll block it out at work. I, a lot of the time, I will do. You know, if, if I'm stressed, if I come home and I've had a stressful day, or I come home and I'm pissed off or whatever, I'll get the laptop out. Yeah, and do work. I'll fuck around, you know. I might just draw some daft pictures. I might just figure. I'll just figure something. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep, if I keep myself busy, but that's probably not a good thing. Probably not. And I, pro- I think a lot of the time as well, because we're not you're not in touch with the, a lot of it's being self aware. And I think actually that that damages self awareness when you try and block out elements of yourself that are actually happening. Um, instead of actually trying to trying to trying to uh, kind of assess why, why why this is happening, why do I feel this? What was the trigger? Because uh, we all have triggers, and so it's, you know a lot of a lot of mental health is is to do with understanding your triggers, what sets you off, what 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 causes different reactions in you, what causes different emotional reactions, and if the more you understand that, the, the, the more self you are, you are, and hopefully the, the, the better your mental health is going to be. But because um, I think that's a big thing as well. I don't think a lot of people are as self aware as they think. I, I, you know, and I think that's that's something that I'm trying to work towards. Um, is is getting actually getting to know myself because a lot of the time I just I, I I shrug off or I I used to just put in a box all the shit parts uh, and just ignore them. Whereas actually it's it's I think I think self awareness it comes goes hand in hand with 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 mental health. Yeah, I agree, and I think um, for me it is a very different type of pressure than what I've experienced previously. So you know, I was I was nine years in the police. Five that was front line, seen some horrific stuff, like mm. awful stuff. Yet it's a very different type of pressure to running a business. Mm. And I'm not going to say one's out of the other, it's absolutely not. But yep. having experienced both, whether it was because I was younger in the police, potentially, yep. or maybe even because I boxed it off, I don't know. But it's a different type of pressure to actually running your own business to, to that, you know, obviously different levels for both. Mm-hmm. 
but it's interesting to sort of see how it how it can affect you even I, I would argue my point being I would argue that what I have done over the last three years isn't as stressful as being in the police mm. yet I've probably found it more stressful Probably, yeah, and it's doing the pressure you put on yourself. Yeah. Because you can disconnect yourself from the stuff that happens with the police, with the police because it's not as personal. True. If this goes tits up, it was you. Everything was you. So every, that, that's the other thing as well, is every decision you make, right, everything that goes tits up in the business, even if somebody leaves or somebody has a, you know, if somebody else does something that fucks something up, you are still partly responsible in some way. Like, you, you own this thing. There's only, this, this thing is you. So everything that happens is attached to you in some way. And I think that sort of pressure, you don't get that same pressure with a job because when you go home at fucking five o'clock, yeah, right, sure. it's all over. Yeah, It's all over. You can switch off. You can go and watch fucking, you know, Housewives of fucking Essex and Cheshire and all that shit, right? But for me, I can't do that. Like, I love films, right? Big fucking film buff. I absolutely love films. I find myself nowadays unable to watch a full film without picking up the phone or looking at something or looking at emails or picking up like I can't do it. Because my mind drifts. It never used to drift. I could watch a full film and I'd, be, I'd fucking enjoy every minute of it. So nowadays, I fucking get halfway through a film and I think, who the fuck's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's, yeah. What? What's happening? It could be an age thing, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just yeah. dementia. So yeah, it's, it's enough to do with business. But. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah, do, you, yeah. do you think there's an element of... <laughs> is it a willful sort of pressure that we put on ourselves then? Yeah. You know, because we're, we're actively choosing to take part in this, aren't we? Mm-hmm. You know, if you yeah. if you start your own business, you know, uh, we're not sat here asking for sympathy. We no, should be clear. Not. No, definitely not. Definitely not. But, it, but you are putting yourselves in a more vulnerable position than you would be as an employee. Yeah, but it's like we said before, mate, I would, I would 100% rather do that than have some absolute corporate, you know, micromanaging bellend leaning on my shoulder with coffee breath telling me that I have to do this and I have to do that. I don't like that word there. I don't like that. You know, I can take a client doing that if you're putting 10 grand in my bank every, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, every yeah. month. I can't take it off you if you're paying me fucking 20 grand a year. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I'm not, that is nothing against anybody who wants to, who's finding a job and likes a job. But for me, I mean, I'm just anti-establishment anyway. I've always, I just can't stand being told what to do. And I'd rather have that pressure on myself because I'd be a lot unhappier and I have been a lot unhappier working for other people. Yeah, that's an interesting point then. So, on the balance of it all, you are much happier working for yourself. Definitely. Despite the pressure. Definitely, mate. It's a different, and I think the, the thing that affects you mentally, I think that the lows are lower. I mean, yeah. they're big fucking dips sometimes. Like, it's, it's scary dips, right? But the 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 highs, I mean, maybe that's maybe that's the, the addiction thing again. Probably. Like the highs doing this. When, when, you, when something goes well in this business, when we and Dino win a new client, we dance, me and Dino uh, had, to, had to give our heads a wobble and have a word with ourselves because every time we used to win a new client, we go out and get absolutely pissed. <laughs> pissed out of our faces. Like, choose diff, leather just because we'd won a new client. Only the pennies are 200 quid a month. You know, some, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, stuff yeah, like that, right? So, um, but, but the highs, it, it's a different level. It's a different level. Uh, it's know, probably not an awful analogy. You know, we're not, we're not obviously slating jobs. We've, we've all been there, got them, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think you're probably right. I think the lows are probably lower, the highs are probably higher. Mm. Whereas in an, it, from my personal experience, at least as an employee, yeah. it's sort of middle range. Definitely. And that, and and again, that is why I think you know I've got friends who prefer that because mm. they don't want to do the highs and the lows. Mm-hmm. They're quite happy in that mid range. Mm-hmm. Um, is there is there a way to avoid those lows, or is that just the nature no, of the beast? I, I think I think it's the nature of the beast, but I also think it's the nature of the person as well. I mean, some of us just have. You know, some of us have more of a chemical imbalance in our heads than other people. That's just that's just the way it is, right? Uh, I think you're more susceptible to 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 you know uh, mental health hiccups. Then then you are gonna that that is only gonna be yeah become worse if you if you choose to become an entrepreneur. Like I I I you know I I think I do have a bit of a chemical imbalance in some ways, but I think that's just part and parcel of it. I mean the, you know it. The, I've, I've always been one of those well I've been through the system twice like the, the, the mental health system in the UK and it's fucking pap right and everyone says it's broken it's not broken because that would mean that it, there was something to break in the first place yeah, it started off shit it's yeah. still shit right um, the way we treat mental health in this country is fucking rubbish and that's not that's not having a go at mental health professionals and the people that work within it it's, no, it's just the, the system yeah yeah it's, it's, been, it's been broken from day one definitely and I've been through it twice and, and, and the second time I went through it I actually came out of it without a diagnosis and going fuck that because 
all they start talking about is pills and this and that, and this will do this and this will do that, but that might... And the, the one consistent thing that they were saying about different things that, that, that they were going to put me on the time was if we put you on this, this will lo- might lower your creativity. And I thought, well, fuck that. The only, the only thing I've ever been fucking been good at, right, is ideas and creativity. You lower that. And I'm just a fucking... I might as well just be a brick on lettuce. Right? I've got no skills whatsoever. I have no decent qualifications. I've got a politics degree. It's fucking useless. So, <laughs> right. So, what, 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 so I thought, I'm not going to do it. I'd rather be... I'd rather have those lows and have to cope with them. And that's why I've been working towards, rather than getting a diagnosis and going on some pills, they're working towards becoming more self-aware so I understand those lows. I was about I to say to that, and them. I think that that the pills are a shortcut to to a solution, aren't they? Whereas actually if, you know, thankfully you're aware enough to be able to try and figure out the, those exactly. those triggers and things like that. Obviously not everyone not everyone is, but that that's, you know, quite a powerful place for you to be in potentially and to be able to actually manage that a different yeah. way. And then what you've got to do, and, and uh, you know, um, is 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 the people that are closest around, uh, you know, to you. You know, my business partner knows of, of my struggles. You know, if I've got another partner, it's about now being able to go. I've got to be able to talk to them about it and tell them when that week, you know, if, if th- this week is not a good week for me, so they know they know the triggers, they know how to treat you, and they know when when to leave you alone and when to because and that's all it is. And I think it's just I think a lot of it is just managing it. Yeah, and I, and I think and you're right there. Stand it and if you've got a support network, whether it's a partner, husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, don't matter, does it? <laughs> yeah. If they they need to be in on it, I think to to be able to support you as well. There's no yeah. point, you know, if there's anyone in it by themselves at the minute, do try and find some support there because you can have bad weeks and mm-hmm. just sometimes be able to talk it through. Yeah. I mean, I over the years I will have blagged my missus head no end of times over a beer where I'm sure all she wants to do is talk about something other than business. Yeah. But I've needed that as a download. Oh, mate. A like the biggest, sometimes yeah. that's the best thing. And, and you know, and sometimes your partner probably ain't going to be the right person because yeah, sometimes, yeah. quite frankly, my missus has been like, Eddie, I have no idea. Yeah. Or, or I don't give a shit. Or, I've, or yeah, well, <laughs> mate, probably sure. that. Yeah. But it, or, or, yeah. or that she can't relate to it. Yeah, yeah. So, so the other thing, surround it? yourself with, or at least try and connect with people who you can talk about so you know you and i have had similar experience in business as a lot of business owners have because it's a it's a similar path for most business owners yeah, yeah, i would yeah, say yeah. um but it's so very different to probably what if, if your mates are all just you know um you know say they're in jobs or whatever that's very different to the path of owning and starting a business and things like that 100 percent. Yeah. i think you hit the nail on there I, honestly mate i remember a mate bringing it up uh over a beer as well and he said he's just fucking Shut up, mate. It's like, all you talk about is fucking hey, work. Stop talking about work. Um, and I got, I got to a point at one point where I thought, fuck me, I've got nothing else. You know, I need to really start, like, start reading again. Or something. I, need, I need something to talk about because all I'm talking about is fucking business. Well, you'll probably start reading a business book or yeah, something. That's the thing, but yeah, that's the thing. But it's just, um, but yeah, it does become a bit, it can, it can be, but this is the other thing that affects on mental health as well is, is being like that and the way you become, because you become so wrapped up in it, it becomes isolating. Mm, yeah. And I don't think people realise that, that that isolation then leads to loneliness. You know, and, 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 and loneliness occurs whether you, it doesn't matter whether you have people around you, you can be lonely in a crowd of people, right? Yeah. Um, and it, it does, it isolates you because it puts you in a place when, where a lot, most of the people in your life have never been. And because they can't relate, who are you, you going to speak to? That's what I mean. I, that's why I think it is so important if you, you know, if someone's listening and thinking about starting a business. Just try and find someone else, even one person who's in the similar boat to you because, yeah, I was grateful that when I started out, you know, obviously I met you and I met a few other people and it makes a big difference. Just someone just to have that download with or rationale with or just sense check something or even just vent and just say, I'm having a shit day, which, you know, once a week at least. Mm -hmm. But just have that, have that ability to kind of communicate with somebody because, you know, obviously your mates are there and they'll be able to, be there for you in, in different ways, but I think someone understanding it is is key into it. Hundred percent, yeah, you 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 have to, and I think all of these campaigns and everything that we say to to people about mental health now is, oh, you need to talk, you need to talk to someone. But actually, most people don't know what that fucking means. How? If you're grown up in a fucking family of like that's a closed book and and you know emotionally stunted, how are you gonna how how if you don't know how to talk to someone or how to open up because a lot of the time is is even in these experiences that we have as, as on as you know business owners fucking entrepreneurs right yeah I'm definitely not uh, one of them. no business owners right um, is the experience that that um, that we have is that 
we, we, we don't know how to describe how we're feeling. All we know is it hurts, and I don't feel very good. Was that you, you mentioned there? If, if you know, talk to someone. But if I said to you, "How are you feeling, Dan?" You're immediately going to say, oh, "I'm right, mate." Yeah, because you don't want to burden someone else. Because that's especially that, and that's a lot. Of that's uh, the British attitude anyway. We don't want to burden other people with our problems. Um, but but we're never taught to open up. We don't teach it in schools. A lot of families don't teach it because it's a British stiff upper lip, and we, you know, that's the way we are. Um, and and it's, and it's the same in, in our community, in the business community. You know, a lot, a lot of companies, right? I, I, I know recently of a, a very good friend of mine who was pretty much bullied out of a company, right? I treated like absolute shite. Really affected his, his, you know, his, his, his head for quite a few weeks. Uh, and ironically, it was, a, it was a, a, a mental health insurance provider. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, the company, the companies say, the companies, a lot of the, 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 the stuff that they do is just a, an external front. They don't, they don't know how to fucking de- cope with mental health. And, and the reality is, as a company, but who's trying to, trying to make profit and trying to make as much money out of the can of, of each employee, they don't want someone who can't get out of bed in the morning. They don't want someone who's, uh, yeah, I've got to take a week off because I'm, oh, I'm feeling depressed. Like, th- th- that's the reality of the situation we're in because actually people act like they care because we have to. Because if you say, if you say I don't give a shit about mental health, I'm just trying to make a profit, everyone will go mad at you. Yeah. Right? So that's why, they, so, so what they do is they put these things in place and most of these systems and most of the, 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 the people they put in place are, are just shite. What's the answer, though? That's the hard bit, isn't it? Uh, not the answer, because there's not an answer, yeah. is there? I think uh, it's yeah. it's about what, what can what can we all do rather than saying, are you all right, mate? Which is obviously going to provoke yeah. the, the standard response of, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, what? mate, I don't know. I don't know. All, all I know is there's a problem, right? I know that there's a massive problem, because I, I, I know from my own experience it's a fucking problem. But it... it what 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 we do in terms of that? Because I'm I'm only just learning myself. Coming from a family of clothes of males who are all closed books, yeah. Right? I'm only just learning how to talk about the stuff that I'm going through. I still I still I can talk about it. I can talk about the problem, but I really struggle to talk about my actual feelings because actually most of the time I don't know how to describe them. I don't know how to talk about it because I how the fuck you know if you've got pain in you like oh I've got pain in my knee it fucking hurts there. Yeah, yeah. It's not the same when you've got something like if you're having a bad week. Um. And, and you can't always put your finger on it anyway, can no, you? No, you? Or you can't. or you look for a cause. And there's not always a cause. And there's not always a cause. Sometimes it's just like I say, if there's a chemical imbalance in your head, there is no reason rhyme or reason sometimes behind what's happened. You just feel like shit for some reason. Um and uh, but the problem is 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 that other people don't want to feel like shit as well, because other people who are, a lot of people who are close to you or you know, or friends and, and, and stuff that they they can be affected and feel like shit if you feel like shit, right? And nobody wants to feel like shit. So generally, that's why they'll just brush it off, have a quick conversation with you and think everything's all right then. Because nobody wants to get into it. Because you get into it and get deep and it can affect, affect them as well. But the truth is, mate, I don't know what the solution is. I'm only just learning about my own, the way I feel. Yeah, I think we're at the, we're at the, we're at the early days of trying to get to, yeah, yeah. to somewhere better. I think it's, you know, the, the fact even we're having this conversation now, mm. we probably wouldn't have done five years ago. No. Um, so things like that are a good step, and I think you know a lot of companies are doing good things in that regard. Mm. We just probably need more of it. And and well, do you know what? So. Just more honesty, I think the amount of mental health issues caused by utter bullshit out there. So whether that's just social media in its own you know bubble that social media is, mm. or it's actually by business owners pretending that they're having overnight success and all these get rich quick shit aspirations. The fact. That you know, children want to be YouTube because they think it's going to make a millions of pounds when it's definitely not going to. That all contributes. Of course it does, yeah, because the expectations are so high because everyone makes it out to be. You know, it's like, it's like with the stuff that Mike Winnett's doing, the stuff that you, you're starting doing now and calling out people that are, you know, to, to showing people what it's really like. Yeah. Right? And calling out these, because it honestly has a damaging effect on what, because everyone now thinks they can make it. If you, if you look at the actual the, the, the percentage of people who are millionaires in the world, or the percentage of people that reach you know billionaire status, you know high net worth, whatever the fuck it's called, right? It's, it's so few, so few. And then you get all these all this fucking forex trading bullshit. It's not forex trading. None of these forex traders have made any fucking money. They're just, just a pyramid pa- scheme. Passive in, yeah, fucking courses exactly. And passive and income, coaching. yeah, it's yeah, just yeah online coaching. I get, tr- I get, honestly, I get stalked around the internet by utter utter idiocy that oh, yeah, yeah. The, it's people with bloody white screen backgrounds are pretending they're in a fucking fancy office and <laughs> shit like that it, yeah, yeah. it drives me bonkers yeah. but uh you know i think it's important you know like we've had a chat today just to try and shine the light on some of the issues that aren't being talked about because the reality is it's a bit too much 
of a Hollywood filter on it in, t- in terms of Possibly. entrepreneurship, I hate Possibly. to use the phrase, um, and running a business. It, it has got a Hollywood filter, but um, you know, I'm hoping over this series we can speak to a lot of people and shine a bit of light on different areas of the business that people don't understand and would like to learn more about. And hopefully, because then it can give people a bit of an insight before they make the jump. Because it's not to say people shouldn't. You know, people will be sat, mm. hopefully listen to this thinking, yeah, I fancy a bit of that, actually. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. like the highs, I like the yeah. lows, and that that's fine. But if you're thinking that, if you're thinking that still now, right, after we just tried to put you all off it, right, you're probably right. You've, you've probably, probably got you've the probably attitude, got the, yeah. yeah. Headspace. I, can, I could, if, 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 I will keep, fa- I could keep failing till I drop dead, right? But I'll keep doing it. I'll keep getting up in the morning and starting the next thing. Yeah, I hope I make it one day. I'll get, get to sell a business one day and uh, make enough money to be free. But even when I do that, I'm not going to stop. I'm not like you now. You haven't been able to stop. You could quite easily have gone and sat somewhere, bought a nice house and just put your feet up. But it's not in it's you. Impossible. Yeah, exactly. It's impossible. You're not. You're not built like that because it was never about the money. Yeah, and that's another misconception. If you're if you're really, well, not if you're really materialistic, but if you're all about the money and if you do it, if you're getting into the game for the money, you're probably in it for the wrong reasons. 100%. 100%. Yeah. It's that that is the it's it's easy to say, you know, once you've done okay or whatever, but that's the least important part of it. Mm. For me it was always about freedom. Um free, and that's you? not financial, mm-hmm. although it you need finances you need to, be yeah, to be free. That's yeah. the that's where it catches you into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the actual, you know, I we've spoke about a lot of the negatives of the journey. I've loved the journey. Like, yes, there's been bad points. Yes, it's affected me, probably physically, mentally. I've had arguments because of it, all that stuff. But the journey's been, is fun. Mm. Um, it is there to be enjoyed. But it, but going back to the point, really, it isn't for everybody like it's painted to, to no, be. And I think that's the key. I think, yeah. you know, some people are not born to, to be on businesses. I, no. I have seen, you know, I, I know a particular individual where they were encouraged to take out personal guaranteed loan against their house to to build a business which, you know, a lay person could say is going to be shite Mm -hmm. and it failed Mm -hmm. and they've lost the house. And it's like, that's because some knobhead has sat there and thought, yeah, well, we should encourage it. No, we shouldn't encourage that behaviour. We should shine a light on it, be super transparent about it and let people make their own risk choices. We shouldn't encourage them to fail. This is the risk of what's going to happen. Correct. You can take that risk, you ought to take that risk. But don't don't encourage it like naively. You know, there's some people who aren't cut out to run businesses, and it's not going to end well for them. And you can see that from day one. No. Um, and it's about having that that dose of reality, I think, which will help people succeed yeah. ultimately. Yeah. Definitely, and I always try and put people off. Like, like I said the other day, like you know, I was been was talking to someone uh, who's doing pretty well in in, in, a, in a, an industry, and and they're um, but they they they're sick of it. They want to get out of it, and they want to move into and, and, and start their own business. But then I, like I was explaining to him, like, you know, are you prepared to do what I did and go and just, you know, and, and have to live off 12 grand for a year, right? Each year. Are you prepared to go and do that? But, well, no, because I've got a car and finance, I've got a mortgage to pay for, and I've got a thing. Then don't fucking do it then. Correct. You, know do it? you want security. If that's what you want, you want security, and that's what you're after. Yeah, the wrong, you're in, in the wrong business, literally. Stay in a job. Yeah, stay in a job. Keep your yeah, nice yeah. house. Keep your nice car. Keep your big flat screen telly, right? I, I will, you know, I will repeat the lines over and over across various mediums over time but you know I was the worst paid employee from day one till the exit yeah. I was driving around my mum's nearly 20 year old Vauxhall Corsa Solid. I've got some fantastic pictures of me parking like a mile away from the place I was going for the meetings <laughs> for fear of I it I used to do that I still do that now yeah well, well there was a time when I parked, I parked as far away as I could from the reception area in yeah. this Vauxhall Corsa bright blue Anyway, got to reception. She was like, oh, you're not in one of the designated bays. You need to come park in a yellow bay. The only yellow bay. Bang outside. Brilliant. Never mind. She's, well, like, she, she's not the one going to instruct me on the deal in terms of like, I'm not going to embarrass myself too much in front of the client. Mm-hmm. Go and speak to the client, have the meeting. It's all very successful. Receptionist is on a dinner. He takes me down to the reception. Can you just get the card out, the, the parking card out from your car? Oh yeah, I'll go get it and bring it back. No, no, I'll come out with you. Okay then. <laughs> never it's walking mild on the road it, as well. I never heard about from him. Um, so yeah, you you have to make a lot of sacrifices, yeah, and, yeah, and you know I, I've got countless tales of of the sacrifices that you know I, I made and made my missus make. Although she obviously wanted to do it with me anyway, but um, that's the bit that people miss, isn't it? I think definitely, they, definitely. they forget I, that. I struggle to make uh, to make decisions on you know materialistic shit now. 
like, like I say, the last few months we actually were able to pay ourselves a decent, decent wage now. And um, and I've still got the same shit car, right? The, with, the, with the front bumper flapping off. Looks yeah. like it's been raped by a gorilla. Right? It's <laughs> fucked, right? It's, and it's a horrible colour. Everyone says it look like, like all my mates joke that I borrowed it off my auntie. It looks like you like typical car, you're yeah. right, right? You're middle-aged, aren't you? But, um, but I've still got that. And then and I remember like um, when I was moving into the, the, the flat recently and uh, and I looked on the floor and I, I, I packed everything up and my, me and my mate were moving out. And I had uh, I had four bin bags, um, a, a PS4, um, and that was it. Priorities, mate. I was looking, I was thinking, fucking hell, that's my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. Holy <laughs> shit, like, you know what I mean? Like, my poor mates, like, my mates got everything, he's like loading sofas in there and all sorts of shit that he's got, right? But even now that I'm, I'm in this way, it's like, one of my mates came around to my, uh, my flat the other day and he's just like, mate, it looks like you've only just moved in. It's like, just fucking please buy something. I've got uh, my telly's balanced on a camping table. Brilliant. Right? Uh, and he's like, it's just ridiculous. He's like, just fucking buy some stuff. And I think, I think actually, mentally, I'm not ready to do it yet because in my head, there's still a risk that everything can go tits up tomorrow. So I'm not ready to commit to stuff. Yeah. I don't want to. Sp- I don't want to spend a load of money. I'd say this. I get. I get. You know. I keep getting pissed every weekend. So and, and spend it on know, that. Yeah. Spend it on beer. But, um, but, but I'm not ready to make those commitments yet. And I don't want to. I don't want to go and spend a load of money on all this. You know, flash stuff. And I don't want to go. I, I'd never want to go and get a car and finance because I know that this could go tits up at any point. Well, that's why. So when when the business started doing well. And I could upgrade from my mum's Vauxhall Corsa. Mm. I upgraded to a £130 lease Ford Focus. Right. But I could have been a dickhead. I could have gone and splashed out on something yeah, that, yeah. That, I would, that, that I would have then sat and worried about being able to pay. Yeah, but I yeah, didn't. Yeah. I went, right, reliable, yeah. cheap. I can afford to run that. Even yeah. if it goes wrong, I can pick that bill up. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, exactly. but, you know, the other side of me was like, yeah, go and get a £400 Mercedes on lease. Yeah, but I didn't yeah. do that, obviously. And it's about... Just being sensible, but again, it goes to that thing of there's two good examples of we're not we're not in it for the materialistic stuff really. Mm-hmm. Like you know, I've always charity shopped and all that sort of stuff. I, I probably still will, mm-hmm. even though I don't need to because I yeah. I enjoy it. And maybe that's me being Absolutely. massive tight ass because I'm northern. I don't know, but yeah. I I'm not gonna be driving around in a red Lambo because yeah. I'm not a massive prick. No, well, I am. I'm, I'm all, I've always been a sale rail as well. You know, I think even if mate, even if I was a millionaire. I'd, I'd still be rubbing speed into my gums and going through the rails at TPM. <laughs> yeah, exactly, I mean? like, yeah. I, Elbowing there. people yeah, out of the yeah. face. Yeah, just so that, but, but I just think it's the way you're built. And I, I, don't, I think if you're built in the opposite way and all you want to do is spend money and look good, you're probably setting yourself up to fail even quicker. Yeah, probably, because I think then they're the people who will milk the business mm-hmm. too early. Mm-hmm. And uh, Yeah, and that, but that's the sort of shit as well. That, 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 that drop. That drop, because you're dropping from on a high there where everyone thinks you're fucking mint, mint car, mint clothes, oh, it's so successful, and so then suddenly in the next minute you're fucking, you're on pot noodles on your mate's couch. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that drop and that and the, the impact on your mental health there is going to be a fucking lot. When, if I have to go back to 12 grand a year tomorrow, right, because everything goes tits up. You'll I'll, still dress shit. I'll be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll still do it. Yeah, exactly. I'll, still, I, I'll be able to do it. Nothing will change for me. Yeah. I'll just have to scale back my, my, my beer intake. Right? Yeah. But the the... the you know, everything else is fine. Like you, you can live on that, that. That I've done it. I've done it. Yeah, for so, three years. Yeah, exactly. So it's not. It doesn't make a fucking difference. Um, you know, the only thing I want to do is travel. Like I'm. I'm that, that's that's what you know. My 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 thing for next year is hopefully when when things get a little bit better and things lighten up is I'm gonna I'm gonna try and visit as many places as I possibly can. That's what I will spend my money on. It's yeah. experiences and stuff and that that yeah. freedom. Like you say, freedom to go and do what the fuck I want. Well, I think we've covered quite a lot there in terms of hopefully shining a bit of an honest light on the mental health aspect. It's probably not an area that's particularly sexy that people talk about too often. Nope. Um, I'm hoping that people who have listened to it have taken something away, whether that's they definitely shouldn't start a business yeah, or yeah, they yeah. are you know, stupid enough to start a business. But I think it's important that you know we do talk about it and we continue to talk about it candidly. And I hope if anyone's listening to this, um, you know, respond on social medias and talk about your own journeys as well. It'd be interesting to know, or if you're thinking about making that leap, um, it'd be really good to know because it's been it's been enjoyable. So thanks for coming in, Dan. Really appreciate that. No probs. Yeah, it's been a been a good uh, good chat, mate.